Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we got a couple of very, very interesting bodybuilding updates. The first one, as you can see, is going to be about Ramon Dino at three weeks out of Mr. Olympia. So he basically posted a full-on physique update. You can see pretty much everything here, like all the poses, and he's going to take uh, his shorts off and show us his legs as well, so we can get a very good idea of what Ramon might bring to the Mr. Olympia stage this year. Now, last year, he was in that first call-out. He placed second, right after Chris Bumstead. And after that Mr. Olympia, there was some talk of uh, Ramon potentially challenging Chris and beating him next year. Because last year it was, let's say, kind of close. It was the closest he got to Chris Bumstead. However, this year it's, it's not so clear because he lost to Wesley Wissers. So realistically, the question is whether he can beat Wesley Wissers at a Mr. Olympia. Or can Wesley Wissers confirm that he is better than Ramon Dino? Now, what is going to be the outcome? Well, this is a tricky one for sure. As you can see, in this video right now, at three weeks out, Ramon Dino seems to be getting in really good shape, in really good condition. But was conditioning ever an issue of Ramon Dino? I mean, last year he kind of barely made it. So at the Arnold Classic, I mean this year, earlier this year, at the Arnold Classic he was conditioned, but he could have been even more conditioned. And he definitely seemed very flat, not necessarily because he didn't carb up, but because he apparently didn't train for long enough before the Arnold Classic. Now, it's a different story. I mean, he, he also has to suffer, like, really bad and, like, make the weight. He, he is very close to his weight cap. He's barely making the weight. So, like, he, you can't expect him to make any progress, and you can't expect him to be blasting full and huge at three weeks out. Now he is suffering. Now he's making the weight, getting in condition. So this look that you're seeing right here, this is definitely not him at his best. He is definitely flat here and not conditioned completely. So if he looks like this three weeks out, he can definitely be, I believe he can be at his 100% this year, and based on all the stories, all the videos that he posted, it seems like he was prepping for this show, uh, he started prepping on time, like, he took that Arnold Classic way too lightly, which was obviously a huge mistake, not only because he lost the show, but because that kind of put him in third spot in the world. This year, it's not only really the question of uh, him versus Chris Bumstead, but of him versus Wesley Wissers. So it was a huge mistake, and he's not going to repeat it, definitely not in a Mr. Olympia. He's putting all of his into this show, it seems like that, and it seems like he's going to bring his uh, absolute best. Now, now, let's answer the question, who is actually going to place higher at the Mr. Olympia, Ramon Dino or Wesley Wissers? Well, once again, Ramon Dino is looking phenomenal right now at three weeks out. This is actually looking quite promising. It seems like he is going to be at 100%. And Ramon Dino at 100% is, in my opinion, the most complete classic physique in the world after Chris Bumstead. And I'm definitely including the classic lines, the classic shape as one of the factors. Now, why Chris is better? It's simply because his structure is perfect. For classic physique, it doesn't get any better than Chris Bumstead, but Ramon, he's also quite, quite aesthetic, very aesthetic, he can get in really good condition, he knows how to bring fullness as well, and he has, like, pretty solid classic shape, classic lines, I mean, check out this video, this is actually phenomenal, so, I would say he's definitely more complete than Wesley Visser's, does she have the same amount of, like, wow factor, classic lines type of thing? No, no, not as much as Wesley. But definitely better legs, I would say even smaller waist. In order for Wesley to defeat him in the Mr. Olympia, Wesley needs to be 110%. He needs to be super crispy and super full. And, like, with his huge frame, maybe he can beat Ramon on the wow factor. But it's going to be difficult. If Ramon is 100%, you know, with his conditioning, his fullness, his shape, his size, he's definitely still very dangerous. And I don't know if Wesley can beat him again, but it's going to be a very, very interesting comparison. You guys tell me what do you think down below. All right, the next thing is very interesting. I don't know how much are you guys going to appreciate what I'm about to say, but I wanted to speak about this because when I saw Brett Wilkins' story, Brett Wilkin, who is, by the way, one week out of Legion Sports Fest, posted a story with Chris Bumstead. 
And what he says here is very, very interesting, at least to me, it was. So I think we gotta talk about it. So Brett says, can't say enough about what the true champion that Chris Bumstead is. Three weeks out from taking his sixth Mr. Olympia title, and he stops mid-leg workout for 15 minutes to take a look at me and send off a pointers. Now, what I'm thinking is... Did Chris Bumstead really stop his freaking leg workout at three weeks out of his last Mr. Olympia to, I don't know, look at Brett Wilkins' physique? I mean, if uh, it was like, let's say, Samson who did this. Maybe not Samson, Samson has great legs, but like if Samson did this like mid-cardio. Or actually, let's say if uh, Brandon Curry, for example, stopped uh, his leg workout to look at someone's physique. What would we say? We would all, like, all the fans would be super mad at those guys for not really trying their best, for stopping their training or their cardio to look at someone else's physique. Now, Chris Bumstead can do this, I guess, because he's that dominant that he doesn't even need to, like, do his leg workout all at once. He can fool around, not train his absolute hardest, and uh, still win the Mr. Olympia, destroy all of those guys. I mean, this is this is kind of discouraging, I guess. If I was a classic physique competitor on the Mr. Olympia stage, if I saw this story, I would be like, this guy doesn't even care. Like, he's not even trying hard to win his sixth Mr. Olympia. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, it's cool that he did this. And also, like, he's a part owner of Raw, which is sponsoring Brett. And I guess they're also friends. So, yeah, it's nice of him, but, like... Maybe Brad should have waited for Chris to finish and then look at him. I mean, he's three weeks out, Chris, so I don't know. Also, like, you know, when you think about the biggest champions, uh, bodybuilding champions, like, imagine if Dorian had this sort of a mindset, you know, stopping a leg workout midway to look at someone else's physique. You know, that would definitely never happen. I could never see any, really any of, of the top open guys do that. Like Phil Heath, Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, Torian, of course, Arnold back in the day. All of these guys were super focused on themselves and like on their training and what they were doing, especially at three weeks out. Nobody would take a break in the middle of their leg workout like this to help somebody else. I mean, yeah, this also kind of means that Chris is a great dude, I guess, but also this kind of seems like he's not really respecting his prep that much, that he is not really taking this, like, very seriously. I mean, he is that far ahead of his competition, he can do this kind of stuff, he doesn't really need to be 100% locked in, <laughs> and I don't think he is for the most part of the year. I thought he would be at three weeks out, but apparently he, he is not, not really. So this kind of tells us a couple of things, like Chris is not really that serious, that focused, you know, that determined. And he is winning because he is that freaking good, because he is so genetically blessed, he doesn't even have to try super hard. I mean, I know that I, personally, would never stop my leg workout, especially if I was three weeks out to do anything else. So, I mean, I was confused when I saw this, like, I don't think Brett did Chris a favor by posting this, I mean, he should be, Chris should be focused on winning again, he shouldn't be fooling around like this, I don't know, man, I guess Chris is a nice guy and that's why he did it, but does this also mean that he's kinda lazy or, like, doesn't take this too seriously, but he just gets away with wins because he's that genetically above everybody else? I'm curious to hear your thoughts, guys, down below in the comment section. Tell me what you think about this. And since we're talking about Chris Bumstead, let's mention his brother-in-law as well, Ian Valier. Because we got a physique update from him as well. Now, you guys know that this guy retired like a year or two years ago now. I'm not even sure how long has it been. I think it was, I think it's like almost two years now. And this is apparently what he looks like right now in his retirement. I am honestly very surprised because he actually looks very good. I didn't expect him to be this big and this lean. And he's 260 pounds right here in this photo. So that's, that's heavy. That's actually quite heavy and quite big. And also, based on what he said on the Fuad's podcast... Uh, he has been off of everything completely for quite a while now because he's trying to get his wife pregnant. He is not even on TRT. He is uh, natural completely. So this is what a natural 
Ian Wallier looks like. I don't know if he started a cycle recently, but I don't think so. I think it was basically last week when he said he would kill for a shot of test, for some TRT, because he's feeling horrible. And based on that, if you consider that, he's actually looking very good right now, and he's maintaining a lot of muscle. I don't know what his training is like these days, but I know that usually when people downsize, when they lose a lot of size, it's mainly because they stop eating regularly and like um, a lot of food, a lot of protein, and I'm guessing he didn't stop that. I don't know what his diet is like, but I'm guessing he's still eating like a bodybuilder and training like a bodybuilder, and apparently he is not on any gear, but honestly, he's looking very good. If it is true that he is really off of everything. And actually, he said in the comments as well that this is actually from last week. So it's not an older photo. He's actually looking very good. So does this mean that he's gonna come back and compete again? I am sort of under the impression that that is probably going to happen. Based on what he's saying uh, on the podcast. You know, when he decided to retire, he was just, you know, kind of fed up with everything. He didn't really enjoy it too much. And in the meantime, I guess he refreshed his body, his mind. He was off the gear for a long time. He wasn't force-feeding himself. So, like, at some point, he's going to start missing the stage. And it's not like he retired because he had some massive injuries. Yeah, like, there was this sort of separation in his chest. But I think it really depended on whether he was full or flat. The same thing with his back, like when he was full, everything would look better, his back, his chest, and like he doesn't have any tears, any big injuries, he is very young as well, he's like 30 something, I don't know if he's even 35 yet, so like he can still bodybuild for quite a while, and I don't think he lost that much size during this, uh, well let's call it a break from bodybuilding, because I don't think he's uh, done forever, I think he's gonna come back. Now, if he wants to come back and do well, he needs to be this size. And this is actually much bigger than he is right now. You guys gotta remember, this guy was one of the freakiest bodybuilders in the world. You know, that's why he was placing so well. That's why he was winning shows and placing seven at the Mr. Olympia. Because he was one of the biggest guys, one of the freakiest guys. He always had crazy conditioning with a lot of size. His structure was never the prettiest. He was never the most aesthetic bodybuilder. He always had these, like, a lot of flaws. A lot of body parts were, like, not super impressive. But, like, overall, he was always super massive, super conditioned. And that did it. So if he wants to come back, he needs to be super freaky again. I don't know if he's willing to go through that again to really push his body to that extent. But he definitely must get a lot bigger. I mean, that photo, that, that mirror selfie, he does look very good in it. But it's, it's a really good angle and really good lighting. Here you can kind of see uh, what his arms are looking like. And yeah, I mean, overall, you can see his, his, the other arm, like the shoulders, uh, the, the legs, everything. He definitely lost some size, but... Not that much, not that much, he's actually in very good condition at 260, so, like, if he pushed his body for one off season and got to 300 pounds in a little bit worse shape and then dieted down and did a prep, I think he would still look very good and he can still win a pro show and go to the Mr. Olympia. Can he place top 7 again? Honestly, I don't think so. I think top 7 is out of the question, I think that's very, very hard, especially these days. But, you know, if he actually brought his absolute best, then maybe he could crack the top 10. I think best case scenario, that would be what, uh, what, what Ian would be able to do. And yeah, I can see him, you know, qualifying, winning a pro show and placing inside of the top 10, like around 10th spot. Whatever you guys think, though, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content like this, guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much guys, for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye bye.